about big data and that this HVAC vendor in Pittsburgh, right? This time last year, they weren't thinking to themselves, during this holiday season, I'm gonna take Target down. I'm gonna have cyber criminals running all over my network, getting into Target, getting on the point of sale, and stealing millions of credit and debit cards. They weren't thinking that way, were they? But it is our belief that had they done big data and behavioral-based analytics, if you literally take the linkages between you and all of the vendors that you partner with, and you start to baseline that data, that, that behavior between you and them and that link, it has a pattern. And as soon as you start to see things go outside of that pattern, you know you have a problem there. And a lot of times people will say to me, oh, well, you know, they had two tools that were going off and they got phone calls. And I said, have you ever actually worked in a security operations center? It's crazy in there. You're trying to figure out, I mean, literally the analysts are sitting there, everything is going off saying, I'm a problem. And they're having to pick which problem they're going to work. So if you had had behavioral-based analytics, as soon as the cyber criminals realized, okay, I'm in an HVAC vendor in Pittsburgh, wow, this is Target, wow, there's the point of sale. And literally, they got greedy and they started running back and forth to deposit the black malware right on the point of sale terminals. That could have been an alarm. And it could have been, do we have a fire? Do we have an outage? Oh no, we have cyber criminals in the network. And things might have been a lot different. So the power of big data and behavioral-based analytics is so positive and so powerful. I want to see you deploying that as an additional creative strategy. How many of you have a relationship with either an email provider, financial services company, or some other provider that when you log in online, one of the things they do is they text you a code that you type in as part of sort of that login process? All right, it's a good amount of the room. So guess what? Uh, you need to be planning what's next after that. Why? Because we're watching the mobile malware attack kits in the cyber criminal underground get very inexpensive. So what does that mean? Okay, so cyber criminals for the most part are evil and lazy. Most of them are not brilliant, okay? Somebody figures out something that works, they sell it to everybody else, and they all do it over and over again. So for example, if you're still running Windows XP, please come on, retire it. Oh my gosh, you had seven years, right? to get ready for that, please let go. If you're not sure you don't like Windows 8, go to the Mac, it's awesome, okay? It's awesome, okay, so sorry. Um, but, but seriously though, I want you to be thinking differently because every time somebody thinks we've got the silver bullet, chip and pin on credit cards, we've already proven in the white hacker's lab you can actually spoof the chip and pin. What are we doing post chip and pin? What are we doing post two-factor authentication where you're texting a code to your customer. The mobile malware attack kits that we're seeing not only do two things, one, take over ownership of the phone, but allow you to really surf the data on that phone. So what does that mean? Well, I, criminal, log in as if I'm you, not criminal, and I am now spoofing your phone so when the bank sends you the two-factor authentication code or the doctor or whoever else it is, I get it too. And I type it in and everyone goes, this is great because we know it's you, not the criminal. Okay, is that existing today? No, but the mobile malware is out there. We believe these attacks will start to take off 2015, 2016.